So as Elizabeth said, my topic tonight is the neediest among us, U.S. healthcare and the poor and the uninsured. And I just wanted to give you a little flavor why I picked that title, The Neediest Among Us. It actually uh, occurred to me when I was reading through the Supreme Court decision back in June that upheld the constitutionality of the Affordable Care Act, that, that law that was passed in 2010. Some people call it Obamacare. Uh, as you know, the court ruled in June that uh, most of the law was indeed constitutional. But there was an interesting twist on that decision, which is uh, affected the Medicaid program. And there the court essentially said, well, Medicaid can be expanded, but only subject to certain limits. I'll say more about that later. But what uh, Chief Justice Roberts, the head of the Supreme Court, wrote in his opinion, one of the reasons why he was troubled by that provision of the law, he said, under the Affordable Care Act, Medicaid is transformed into a program to meet the health care needs of the entire non-elderly population with income below 133% of the poverty level. That's a complicated phrase. I'll explain more later about what that means. What he went on to say then is, it is no longer a program to care for the neediest among us but rather an element of a comprehensive national plan to provide universal health insurance coverage. And I thought, well, that's really interesting because it means that if you are at the poverty level or below, you're somehow needy, but if you're just above the poverty level, you're not the neediest among us anymore. And I thought, well, what does that say about how we feel about everybody who doesn't have health care now, needs to have health care or health coverage, whether they're needy or not. And it really plays into the same argument we're having as a country now over who's deserving of support from the rest of us and who's not. Just to explain a little bit about what we're talking about there, 133% of the federal poverty level, which I'll explain later is the new th threshold uh, for Medicaid, is about $14,000 a year for an individual. So. It's not being a millionaire. Uh, and so the Chief Justice, in effect, was saying, if you're making $14,000 a year as a single person, you're no longer among the neediest among us. This is a different ball game. And that's, as I say, what got me thinking about uh, some of the questions I'm going to address tonight. So who are America's needy or poor anyway? How do we decide who's going to be considered needy or poor and who we're going to help? What's the health status of those people? Um, what other factors are linked to poverty that also contribute to poor health? Then a related question, who are America's uninsured, these people now that we're attempting to help uh, through the Affordable Care Act? What's the connection, uh, if any, between poverty and uninsurance? And then finally, how do we meet the health care needs of the poor and the uninsured today and what should we do in the future? And what are some of the arguments now that we're having as a country about that, playing into the presidential election and probably playing out beyond the presidential election as well? So to start with, who are these needy or the poor? Well, the dictionary definition, of course, says poor is having little or no wealth, few or no possessions, uh, skip down humble, you could have a, be a poor spirit, uh, you might be eliciting or deserving a pity or pitiable. Uh, you might have little or no wealth. Uh, and then if we look at needy, the needy definition is lacking the necessities of life, very poor. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. We all, we all get that. When it comes to deciding who's poor in the country, uh, the U.S. Census Bureau uh, looks at that, and they actually look at people's income. Uh, and you, as you can see, these are uh, numbers that were just released uh, within the last couple of weeks by the Census Bureau. You can see in that red circle there on the right, the top one, we have a, an estimated 46 million Americans now who are considered to be in poverty. 46 million, and of course we're a country of somewhat higher than 300 million Americans at the moment. So that gives us a national poverty rate of about 15% of the population who we agree to call the people in poverty. Now, again, as I mentioned, that is a, a standard that is set by the federal government in terms of income. 
And here are the poverty guidelines for the 48 contiguous states and the District of Columbia. There actually are slightly different standards for both Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, so if you, if you look at that, you'll see for a household of one, you are deemed to be in poverty if you have income below $11,000 a year. If you're a household of two, it's 15000 A household of three, it's below 19000 a year. That's how we set those official federal poverty standards, federal poverty guidelines. And if we look at this uh, in comparison to what most people in the country make, these are also uh, rather new numbers out of the Census Bureau, you can see that the median household income in the country is now about $50,000 a year. Now that's the medium. So it means half the people in the country are making more than that, half the people in the country are making less than that. And so if you look at a family of three that was living at the federal poverty level, they would be earning about $19,000 a year now. So you can see they are below half of, what, of the median income. So those are folks who, by any stretch of the imagination, are, uh, I would argue, are pretty clearly the neediest among us. They're at the bottom uh, level of the income scale. And as you can see, one major problem in this country is that from 1967 to 2011, uh, stated in 2011 dollars, median income just hasn't grown all that much in this country. Uh, and that's another a major issue that particularly has affected those on the bottom, because in addition to incomes not growing very much, we've also had lots of widening income inequality, particularly in the last uh, 25 years. 